Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards, and in this lesson, number 118, we'll take a look at some problem-solving skills, specifically something called limiting assumptions. It's my belief that all of us in IT are problem solvers. As a matter of fact, our problem solving skills really did start, in fact, when we were in grade school. When we were presented with different kinds of mathematical problems, such as finding an unknown, such as where is X or <laughs> find X, or even expanding polynomials. Now, these kind of math problems that we were presented started gaining some of our problem-solving skills. And it is my belief and feeling that as an architect, we're also problem solvers. And now that we're professionals out of grade school, we sometimes have very, very hard problems to solve. I wanted to show you a technique called limiting assumptions. Um, really on how to solve problems. Now, a limiting assumption is an assumption that we place on the problem which prevents us from actually finding a solution. And the very first one of those is time. For example, you might hear or say, well, wait a minute, we don't have time to implement that feature. And what we're doing when we say these kind of things is placing a limiting assumption on our problem that prevents us from finding a solution. And the way to counter that limiting assumption is basically to really then ask, well, wait a minute, can the solution done be, be done quicker or maybe be iterated? Maybe we don't have to do the whole thing at this time. Another limiting assumption that we place on solving problems is that of money. And how about this quote here? We don't have enough budget to implement that feature. And so we say, okay, and we don't do it. But that's an assumption. Because one of the ways of countering that limiting assumption is basically say, well, wait, can we find some more money from somewhere else? Maybe, maybe there's a project that's doing a lot better than ours and they have some excess budget that we can, well, steal from them. <laughs> um, can we produce a cheaper solution? Uh, maybe we can leverage uh, some existing code uh, within our company or frameworks or even third-party um, tools or, or products that might help us make a cheaper solution. Another limiting assumption is that of physics. A lot of times we try to do something and it's like, well, wait a minute, that feature is impossible to implement. And we ask, well, wait a minute, is it really physically impossible? Or is it just a very difficult problem? to solve. There are certain things that are physically impossible at times, such as transferring data, um, maybe across the world in several nanoseconds. Well, that, yes, is uh, physically impossible. <laughs> Light does not travel that fast. Um, how, however, um, too many times we place a limiting assumption by saying something's impossible when what we really mean is that it's overly difficult and let me find another solution. Now, the last limiting assumption I want to show you is that of laws and regulations. So maybe we want to implement a certain feature and somebody says, wait a minute, you can't do that. There's laws preventing us from doing that. And the countering statement to this limiting assumption is really saying, well, can the law be changed? Uh, this is what lobbyist groups are for. If that's very important to us, maybe we can change the law. What if we break the law? Um, is it just a slap on the hand or are we uh, getting uh, hefty fines? Uh, maybe we can reinterpret the law by bringing in our legal team uh, just to see if there's a different interpretation that will allow us to bypass a certain regulation or law. Let me offer you up some tips regarding assumptions that we make in our problem solving. In our daily life, we always make assumptions. And the first tip I can offer you is to humble yourself. You see, those like me who have been around the block many, many times in our career, we approach a problem and say, oh, I, I've done that dozens of times. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a slam dunk. Don't worry. I've already got the solution in my mind. 
rather humble yourself and realize that every environment, every business problem is different than the one you did before. And the responsible way of approaching that kind of assumption is really to say, well, I've done this several dozen times. Maybe I can leverage those solutions as a head start in finding your specific solution. Now, every problem has its handful of assumptions. Another tip that I can offer you is to make a list of those assumptions behind the problem. Uh, somebody may offer up something. Is that a requirement or assumption that you're making? And I like to use either a spreadsheet or a to-do list and write down all of the assumptions that we're making because in most cases, we try to form, pro form solutions to problems and we don't have all of the requirements. We have to make assumptions. However, the follow-on to that is then, can you verify your assumptions? In other words, are they correct? And now, once that we have a list of assumptions we're making, we go to try to research to find out if we can answer or validate of certain assumptions. Some of them we can, uh, some assumptions we can't. Now, the last piece of advice I want to offer you is this. Watch out for the obvious assumptions because those are usually the ones that are wrong. So if somebody makes an assumption about a particular problem, uh, make sure you still write it down even though it might seem obvious because it might not be. So let me show you how to apply limiting assumptions to a problem. And so here's a problem that we have. Let's actually read it and find out what the answer is to this. And so here's the story. A man ordered a glass of red wine and white wine at a bar. He took the glass of white wine in his right hand and the one with red in his left hand, and he drank them both. The next day, he did the same thing. When he was leaving, the bartender asked him, I didn't know firemen drink that way. How did the bartender know? He was a fireman. Now, this is an interesting exercise in assumptions. And so what I'd like you to do, if you can, is to pause the video, think about this for a couple minutes, and form your assumptions about how the bartender knew he was a fireman. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this together now. So hopefully you, you paused and thought about the problem a little bit. The first thing we do in problem solving is to look for a connection between the data and the unknown. What is the unknown to the problem? The unknown was that the bartender knew he was a fireman. That's the problem. He knew he was. How did he know? What's our data? Well, he had red wine, white wine. Maybe there's something about fire trucks are red and white, but uh, and he held each in his right and left hand. Uh, he drank both of them. He's a repeat customer at the bar. Uh, he did eventually leave the bar. I don't see any connection between the data and the unknown. This is a common situation and a common scenario. So let's start forming assumptions. Oh, what might be one assumption you might make? Well, uh, maybe he drove up in a fire truck. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, is it? Maybe he, maybe he did. And then the bartender saw that he drove up in a fire truck, came out, but maybe that's a little far-fetched. Let's keep going. Oh, I know, he was wearing a fireman's uniform. Well, it certainly would be able to identify him, but that'd be kind of ridiculous, you know, the whole, helmet and the tanks and that big suit that they have to wear, um, maybe also a little far-fetched. Maybe we modify this assumption to say, well, yeah, but maybe he was wearing uh, like a fireman's jersey or a t-shirt that had the fireman's station on it. Hmm. I have one of those, so maybe not far-fetched, maybe so. Well, let's keep going though. Ah, I know what happened. Uh, he put out a bar at the fire a prior night, and so the bartender knew him that way, and that's why he gets free drinks all the time, and that's why he orders both. Okay. Another assumption, which might be more reasonable, is that the bartender knew him. You know, he knew him and knew he was a fireman. They chatted and stuff. We keep making assumptions. 
And once we're finally done listing off all of our assumptions to a problem, we try to validate them. Uh, we try to see which assumptions are far-fetched and which ones might be most reasonable. And out of our list, well, it seems like number four might be the most reasonable one, and maybe number two, and we have a discussion about those. But this is an interesting thought experiment because the point is, without assumptions, you cannot solve certain problems. As IT professionals, architects, developers, we don't always have all of the requirements. And one of the ways of particularly solving a especially hard problem is forming those assumptions. It's a very powerful technique in problem solving. For more information, uh, you can go to either book that myself and Neil Ford wrote, uh, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and our most recently published book in the fall of 2021, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Um, these are full of wonderful advice, techniques, tips in software architecture. Another resource you can go to is my website, developer2architect.com, and specifically Software Architecture Monday, where all of these lessons are housed. And you can see a list of all, well, at this point, 118 of them. And so this has been Lesson 118, Limiting Assumptions in General Problem Solving Skills. Stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture. Thank you.